Welcome back, Stasa23 here, back again with some knife therapy, and uh, before I get started, I'd like to say thanks to Blade HQ who made this review possible. They sent this knife in our, to our pass around group, so super awesome. I would have never had a chance to check out this knife otherwise. I'll leave a link down in the description to their site, so if you want this knife, you can pick it up from them. The knife in front of you, as you can see, is the Medford Knife and Tool Production Praetorian. Comes in this nice zipper padded pouch. Comes in this nice white box, proudly made in the US of A. You get some Blade HQ swag there. Um, it has their, their business card. I think this is one of the coolest business cards. Love it, transparent, very, very cool. Um, on the zipper thing, uh, it has this right here. It fell off. I just need to put it back on. And also, you can pause and read. There you go. And this is, I don't know if this is still included in all his packages, but this one's kind of funny, so you might want to pause and read it. Nick Shabazz had this on his video. And like I said, it's, it's, it's pretty funny. There you go. So... Let's, got, let's dive into this knife and basically we get started, who's this knife for? And, and in my eyes, this knife is for all the, the Medford enthusiasts out there who always wanted one of his custom Praetorians but couldn't foot the bill of the six dollars $800,000 Praetorians and up. And this one, I'm not going to say affordable, but is a lot more affordable than those, those, those customs. And this guy is coming in right at $390 on Blade HQ. And besides your Medford enthusiasts, who else is this knife for? It's, you know, for the people that, you know, just want a beastly knife because it puts a smile on their face. You know, that, that's enough to buy a knife sometimes. Also, who I think this knife is, is really geared toward being that Greg's, a, he's a former Marine and he makes combat style knives. Uh, I would say this knife is really geared toward, you know, your your, your Marines, your your any military, any branch of the military, those type of people. And being that this knife is not something that really fits into my EDC roles nowadays, especially with what type of clothing I have to wear. It just doesn't really make sense for me. So I wanted to kind of get the thoughts on somebody who would have, you know, this would fit the bill for. So my neighbor's a, an ex-Navy SEAL and his son is uh, active duty Marine and he's about to get deployed. So I would show them this knife and I want to get their first impressions. And their first impressions right off the back was, wow, that's a cool knife. Where do I buy it from? So of course, gave him Blade HQ's information and they should be buying one of these for a son. I told him, I want to see pictures, if possible, of it in use and what it looks like when it comes back. He told me he'd do it for me, so let's hope we can get some of them pictures. But they liked all the aspects of the knife, and let's dive into it so we can, we can see what my thoughts are. Some quick specs. You have an overall length of 8 and 3 quarters, blade length of 3 and 3 quarters inches, Handle length of five inches with a grip area of three and three quarters inches. You have a nice hefty blade stock of 4.85 millimeters or 0.19, 0 0.190 inches. Uh, you have a behind the, the edge thinness at the thinnest portion on this, this straight edge of 19 thousandths. That really shocked me. And we'll talk about that more. Basically, it's because of a very deep hollow grind. So, uh, and, and the thinnest portion of this robust flat ground Tonto tip, you have 27 thousandths. So, you know, it's, it's for a purpose. Um, the handle thickness is 0.63, so a good bit above average. And uh, the, the width of how much it's gonna, real estate is going to take up in that pocket is 2.06 inches wide. So it's a wide beast. And uh, 
people buying this usually know what they're getting themselves into. Uh, let's open her up and take a look at this blade. You have a nice blasted stone washed uh, blade finish on there. Uh, a nice finish that will hide wear pretty well. And uh, you have dual matching fullers or blood grooves, whatever you want to call them. It doesn't really matter. Uh, you also have on the straight portion a very deep, deep hollow grind. So it keeps it nice and thin, which I'm going to tell you, I was rather shocked. I was cutting up some thick cardboard, uh, some two-ply cardboard um, that has an extra layer on it for a flat screen TV. And I definitely didn't think this thing would actually cut it because I, I had other knives a lot smaller and svelter than this that struggled. And this thing did rather well. Um, you know, of course, you know, it, you will get the wedge effect up in here, but it, it, it did a really good job. I, I, I didn't have that type of experience with the cardboard I was using. I can show you right here. This is just regular Amazon one ply cardboard. And let's see if I can show you this behind camera. I mean, see, I mean, it, it, it doesn't struggle going through there whatsoever. I mean, look, see there, it's a clean cut, clean cut. I'm not, I'm not ripping it, you know, and is it the best cutter? No, definitely not. But it, that's not its intended purpose. Just wanted to show that it can do those small tasks as well. Um, let's look, you don't, you have very minimal billboarding. You have, um, I think rather tasteful Medford logo right there. And I just noticed is that it looks like a, uh, a knife above the M. I don't know. It could be wrong, but that's what it looks like to me. And that's what I'm going to call it. Then you got the big D right here. Get y'all minds out of the gutter. That's the blade steel D2. Uh, you have some very aggressive uh, deep cut jumping up top on the spine and onto the handle. This this guy is definitely not going to slip out of your hands. Uh, you also have nice chamfer going over the spine. So you're not going to be able to strike a fire steel with this guy. Sorry if y'all like that kind of stuff. But um, it's not sharp. You can see they, they even did the chamfer all the way back there. That's, that's a nice little touch. Um, this side of the blade is completely sterile. That's also nice. You see right here, these are not thumb studs. Those are your, um, those are, that's your stop pin in the open position. And you see that on um, like hinder knives, strider knives, and both of those are hard use. So they, they all know what they're doing. And I'm, I'm guessing that that's a very strong method. I'm guessing those are press fit. I don't know. Um, you have a perfectly executed sharpening choil right here love to see that and with my skinny fingers I can actually creep up there to do a little bit of fine cutting um, I don't think it's intended for that but hey I use it if I can um, let's see let's get this guy closed up you have some nice tan G10 I think it comes in tan and black that's your options uh, you have a nice chamfer going around the entire scale, so you don't have any 90-degree uh, edges. Um, you have a spanner-style proprietary pivot, which all the hardware is titanium. Love to see that. And uh, the body screws are T8 Torx. Very, very nice. On this side, you have the, was it the antebellum American flag? I don't know. I, I, I know I'm an idiot, but... There you go, nice. It's uh, it's milled into the into the show side scale. Uh, flip it over. You have the Medford logo milled into the lock side scales, and you have a titanium bent spring pocket clip, whatever you want to call it, with a nicely done um, blue anode Medford knife and tool uh, there with the USA. And I don't know if my camera will pick it up. But right there it says 100% made in the U.S. of A. So very cool. And it's cool. Definitely want to be proud of that. Uh, he makes everything in-house. That's, that's another cool aspect of this knife. Uh, one thing I don't know if I showed before. But production knife. And it comes with a mirror polish edge. And a super sharp mirror polish edge. Let's see. 
see if I have some paper right here so I can show y'all. And I have cut up a good bit of cardboard with this guy. And let's see if it has any snags in it yet. Nope. Still nice and sharp. Love it. Um, let's see. You, you have a flow-through construction. So you can blow it out with some compressed air if it gets dirty. You have titanium barrel standoffs. Nice. I like that little added touch right there. There's not plain Jane. You do. It is a titanium liner lock. That liner is very robust, the size of uh, some frame locks out there. There's your lockup engagement. I love it whenever uh, the lock is engaged 100% underneath that tang. That ensures confidence in me. That's where I like to see it, at least at that. Any earlier, I, you know, whatever. This way you still have a lot of room to wear. And it, it, doesn't, it, it doesn't have a um, steel insert, for one, because it's a liner lock. But two, Greg knows how to do his geometries, and he's been doing this for a long time. And you do get a hint of lock stick, but that will break in over time, and it'll go away uh, once that titanium is work hardened and formed to the uh, the tang of the blade. It'll go away. But I, I like a little bit of stick, especially in a in a hard user like this, just because I don't have to worry about lock slip. Um, I've had, I'm not going to name the company, but I've had a certain company's steel lock bar inserts slip on me, especially I was just hitting it like this and that thing would slide over and close almost on my hand. So that's not cool. Um, the ergos on this guy and the hammer grip is probably the most comfortable. Um, you can feel that jumping a little bit, but it's not bad here. I have a medium sized hand. And the only thing I noticed with it being uh, as thick as it is, where my hands lay out, it, it kind of catches the creases right here. So it's, it's not super comfortable with my hands. But with this type of knife, I could see you using gloves with it anyway. Especially with the aggressive jimping. Even though you can make cuts without the gloves, you know, when you're bearing down, you might want gloves because, look, look at that, <laughs> you probably do a little damage to your thumbs. Um, let's get a quick weight on this guy and then I'll, I'll go over some, some minor complaints I have with this guy, but you know, you gotta, whenever the complaints I'm getting, you gotta understand that this, this knife just doesn't, it's not complaints that 7.65 ounces. So you definitely can tell this guy's in your pocket, but like I said, you, you should know that coming into it. And if you, if you're looking for that type of thing, the opening method you're not going to spidey flick this. You're not going to flip it out right here. It's not, it's not intended for that. What I do is, is I pinch both sides of the fullers and open it up like that. I can open it up perfectly fast enough or as fast as I need it. And just like Greg, how he closes it, I do the claw method where I just put my finger in like that and I two-hand close it. That's, that's the easiest method for me. Um, I don't have the most dexterity in my hands. And my thumbs aren't that strong, so I can't, I can't quite push it over. There is a good bit of lock bar uh, tension on there. You know, goes along with the overbuilt theme. So let me talk about a few of the nitpicks. You know, like I said, some of these are just because of my personal preferences. To me, the jimping is a little too harsh. You know, but like I said, you'd probably be wearing gloves with gloves. It wouldn't be a problem. It would be a, a great advantage. Um, the the proprietary hardware, you know, I don't, I don't like it. Um, of course, a, a spanner bit. I, I have things that could easily take this guy apart, but for your average user, that's a problem. And um, I, I don't know exactly how the warranty stated, but I think it voids your warranty if you take this guy apart. I don't know. He has made some changes to it, so don't quote me on that. Um, another thing that you know it even though greg does a, a great job on d2 and he's been using it for a long time and it, it's a good steal but at 390 dollars, i would have liked to see an up i would have loved to see 3v steel on here to me that is the uh, ultimate of uh, tough hard use you know mixing together that would have been an uh, excellent choice you know along with a whole bunch of others but i would have liked to see at least something like that um 
Let's see. Like I said before, the lock bar tension is quite strong, but you know that's a, a complaint that's you know geared to me. I understand why you know he wants to ensure this thing's going to stay open whenever it needs to stay open, and I can definitely you know easily disengage it, but it's just not the most comfortable, and it's a two-hand knife, you know, not just not something that is in the top of my EDC list. Um, and one more last thing, this is just a nitpick, is uh, the, I think the, you could have refined the, um, let's see if I can get it to refine the titanium liners a little bit. You can see the chatter marks along the titanium. There you go. It would have been nicer to see, you know, it refined. You can see how he polished where the, uh, the, the, Stop the blade stops gonna hit there so he gets perfect engagement. That's nice to see, but I would have liked to see it. You know, he could have polished the whole thing like that pretty quick and pretty easily and then blasted it. That's just a, it's it's not hurting the functionality of the knife whatsoever, but just something, you know, a little nitpick. You know, I can I start to get pretty nitpicky whenever it's at the three hundred ninety dollar price point. Let's get some size comparisons and some some comparative options out there and of course you know if, if you're going to show hard use you got to show the cold steel 4 max i've tested this guy i know the 4 max can handle it and it's crazy i didn't think i had a knife that could dwarf this guy and the 4 max dwarfs it so there you go i think this guy runs at you know somewhat similar i think 300 dollars. i don't know i think that's what they were when i bought them they might have came down a little bit but you got 20 v 20 CV blade still here, triad lock, you know, it's, it's going to be your personal preference. Uh, another one with the steel that I like, is the Spider Coat Tough, and it's got 3V steel. They're about the same exact size, if not the same exact size. Um, you know, this one's a frame lock though, and like I said, you got the 3V blade steel. Let's see what they how they stack up with blade thicknesses. Pretty comparable. They look like they could be. Um, uh, the the tough might be a little bit slimmer, not by much though. Uh, what else do I have? The K2 Spyderco Friedmere K2. It's a lot longer, but the Praetorian's wider and the Praetorian. To me, it feels like a, a more of a beast than this. You just have the 10V steel in there. That's that's pretty awesome. But you don't have your lock bar insert here, and this lock hasn't moved at all. It looks like it's 100%, but it actually has a chamfer right at the edge of this, so it's more like 75%, and no lock stick there. It's worn in great, super smooth knife. Like I said, it hasn't, hasn't went over anymore. You know, this is another knife that has no lock bar insert that's uh, several years old. And that's where the lockup has settled in. And Les knows how to do his geometry excellent too. And this, this thing's, you know, good to go. I, I love this knife. But there you go, the VCP. Um, VCP's a little bit shorter, not by much, but a little bit. So there you go. There's my size comparisons and some competitive options. So what, what are my final, my final thoughts on this guy? If you, you know, need this type of knife and say you're, you're a soldier or something like that, do I think this, this thing would, would do, serve you well? Hell yeah. I don't think you'd have any issues with this guy. Like I said, Greg makes knives for combat. And I think you'd be pleasantly pleased. Um, and then, you know, for the enthusiasts, I think it's a well-made knife. You know, you're getting a lot of big chunk of steel here. Uh, big, big slab liner lock there. Um, no doubt, you know, Greg, Greg makes a, a good product. And it, it can handle you know, these, these lighter duty tasks, like it's not going to be awesome at it, but it can handle it. You know, it's, it's not going to be as good of a slicer as your, you know, your Delica, but I mean, you could probably 
put two or three of these uh, edges, stack them up, and it probably still wouldn't be the same size. But, you know, that, that's not the intention of this knife. This in, the intention of this knife is to be good jack-of-all-trades, master of none. But I, I say that, but it, it, to me, it's a master of destruction. <laughs> so tell me what y'all think about this guy. Uh, is it something that, 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 that excites you? Do you like overbuilt, you know? You know, that the overbuilt tactical market isn't what it used to be when I first started. That was like everybody was into it with the striders and the hinders. And it's not as big as it used to be. But, you know, there's still a market out there for it. And, you know, if you are if you were a soldier or if you are a soldier, would you be confident in carrying something like this? I mean, if the price tag didn't matter. I want to hear y'all comments and thoughts down below. Very, very interested to see what y'all think about it. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Spread it with all your friends and family and your social networks. And if you're not already, hit that subscribe button. And while you're at it, hit the bell button because I'm creeping slowly up to the 2,000 subscriber marker. And you don't want to miss the giveaway. I'm trying to make it a very epic giveaway. So get in while you can. And I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.